Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming with you. This is going to be a short video, but I wanted to do a video talking about flywheels because of some recent things that have come up. And um, on the channel, I always, always try to give you the most accurate, proper description of parts, parts that are interchangeable, parts that will work, all kinds of cool stuff, guys. All kinds of cool stuff. Tech tips and tricks. As a professional mechanic, I've been turning wrenches for about 30 years, and I'm telling you, when something works, something works, and when something doesn't work or is dangerous for your bike, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. So, okay. So right here we have the Yamaha RX50 flywheel. And we have the KD80 flywheel. Now this flywheel is the same diameter as the KEs and all that. Unfortunately, this one's a six magnet. But we're not going to get into that por portion of it. I, I have some things I want to talk to you guys about. And they're very, very important. So I need you guys to listen to me very, very carefully. The Yamaha ignition system is made by Mitsubishi. The Kawasaki one used is made by Nip and Denso. They're two different systems, okay? The plates may look alike, but the flywheels are different, okay? Now, I'm going to talk to you guys about why this four-magnet flywheel is not good for your CDI on your KE100, Okay? There's a lot there's a lot of negative stuff about this and I'm going to explain to you it all in this video, okay? So we're going to talk about the first thing, okay? The size. So this flywheel right here I'm going to put on top of this one here if I can match them up. I'm matching them up on one side right here and then you can see that the Yamaha flywheel is bigger. Okay? Now that means your engine is going to have to work a little harder to move a bigger flywheel, causing less horsepower, okay? So if it has to move a bigger flywheel, it's going to be less horsepower. The lighter the flywheel, the smaller the flywheel, it's going to spin faster, okay? Resulting in more power, more speed, all right? More crank speed. The second thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is these drilled holes right here. Okay, you can see how there's drilled holes in the face of this. And sometimes, not on this particular flywheel, but sometimes they're drilled on the outside. Okay, and then on this flywheel, you can see they have some offsets. This one really is internally balanced. What does that mean? That internally balanced cranks are, these holes right here, are shaved into the crankshaft, not onto the flywheel. So this is an externally balanced flywheel. This one's an internally balanced flywheel. There's a big difference. What does that mean? That means that if you put this a Yamaha flywheel on a Kawasaki, the balance is gonna be different. The harmonics are gonna be different. So this could result, by putting this Yamaha flywheel onto a Kawasaki crank, even though it will fit, it, will, it can cause crankshaft failure, okay? It can cause main bearing failure. It can cause a lot of catastrophic failures on your bike, okay? The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is timing, okay? Now, we're going to take this out of the way. I want you guys to pretend, because I don't have one handy. So, I want you guys to pretend that this is a four-magnet flywheel, okay? Pretend it's a four-magnet flywheel. And we're going to take this Yamaha flywheel right here, which is a four-magnet, okay? Just because it has four magnets doesn't mean it will work on a four-magnet application. Okay, Kevin, you're losing me. What do you mean by that? What I mean by that is, see that right there, that keyway, that position, all right? 
that position right there on the keyway, this, see where the, the gap is on the magnet? On a Kawasaki, these magnets could be turned a little bit in that direction. So what that means is, when this thing comes around and it's going to excite the, um, the ignition timing, your magnets are going to be in the wrong place, and your firing order is going to, your firing is going to be off. Okay, so you're going to, have to do a whole lot of modification. So, with that said, the magnets are not going to be in the same place. So this is not going to be a bolt-on system, and that's what I was trying to get ahead of you guys in the videos. Now I showed you guys the magneto plate from an RX50 that came off of this right here, and I'm going to be putting it into a Kawasaki KE100, but I got to use the KE100 flywheel with the four magnets. I can't use the Yamaha one. It won't work. So now I want to show you guys something else. Let me show you guys this. This is a, K, um, a KD80 flywheel. Okay. Same design, same timing marks as a KE100. This is a Yamaha flywheel. Okay, used on the RX-50 flywheel. Alright, so what I did was, I put both of these side by side. And you can see how I have the flywheel key at 12 o'clock and at 12 o'clock. Okay, if you look on the timing mark, here's the ignition timing here. Right there. Here is the ignition timing on the Yamaha. See, they're off. They're off quite a bit. So you're talking... Quite a bit. You're talking some serious numbers there in the, in the ignition timing being off. So putting a Yamaha flywheel on a Kawasaki or a Suzuki or any other bike that is not the flywheel designed for that particular bike is extremely dangerous. Having it can cause catastrophic failure to the bearings, to the crankshaft, to the engine itself. Your timing's going to be off, so your bike's not going to run. And if it does run, it's going to be backfiring, kicking, farting, spitting, and everything else. And it's going to rob you of power. Because it's bigger, and the engine is designed for a smaller... When they plan out these engines, okay? When they plan out these engines, they plan them out, they balance things out, they measure, they use... Them. Now, the tapers on here and the taper on here are extremely close they are very identical all right very identical the tapers are very very identical okay so this this will fit on the crank however it's not going to work properly you're going to lose power you're going to damage your engine and the four magnets just because it's four magnets there's also a placement where they need to be. And that's the purpose of the timing. So, a lot of people ask, Kevin, well, I can't find a 4-magnet KE100 flywheel from 1996 to 2001. Yes, they are very hard to find. They are. They're very hard to find. They are out there. You have to keep looking, unfortunately... Unfortunately, you can um, go to Partzilla, get the part number, probably Google it. Um, you can call around local junkyards, um, you know, motorcycle junkyards, see if anybody's got them. Um, I personally, I buy, I buy a parts by cheap. Here's how I get all my CDI. Everybody's like, oh, you've got a lot of CDIs. How do you get so many CDIs, Kevin? Well, I'm going to tell you my trick, okay? I will buy a junk bike, a junk one, oh, it hasn't ran in 10, 15, 20 years, I don't care, I'll give you 300 bucks for the bike, I get the bike for 300 bucks, I rob the ignition system off of it, and the carburetor, and then I sell off all the rest of the parts and I double my money, plus I get my parts I want, that's how I do it, well I don't have place for that or time for that, I'm doing the best I can to help you guys out. That's how I do it. Alright, so I just wanted to share with you guys how I get my CDI pots. I buy junk bikes. 
I strip them off. I do not sell them. Okay? I do not sell them because I use them in bike builds that I have. Okay? I You can use the Magneto plate on any bike you want. You can use it on a Suzuki. You can modify it to fit a Suzuki, a Kawasaki, a Honda, anything you want to put the KE100 CDI onto, you can do it. Or the other style. However, you must use the proper flywheels. Or else it's not going to work. Okay? It's just not going to work. So, or if it does work, it's not going to be right. And you're going to have catastrophic failure down the road. So, I wanted to put this video out there to show you guys that there is a big difference. You're going to be turning a heavier flywheel, which is going to rob you of horsepower. So, if you're already doing 55 miles an hour as a top speed... You might want to knock 5 miles off that. You'd be doing 50 if it even works. Then, your timing's going to be off. So you're going to be doing all kinds of modification to that. But the worst part about the whole thing is the catastrophic engine failure that can occur because it's not balanced. And when I say balanced, I don't mean this part balanced. I mean it's balanced to the crank. They spin the whole thing. Okay, not just the flywheel. They are matched. It's a matched system. They measure it in ounces. It's got to weigh a certain weight. This flywheel is definitely heavier than this flywheel. Okay? There is a big weight difference between the two. So, make sure that when you're doing these, you use the proper flywheel for your bike. Okay? So, I was going over some of the stuff on them. I was checking them out. I was comparing them because a friend of mine said, Oh yeah, you can use it. You got to do some stuff and you got to change, you know, and I said to him, I said, well, you'd have to change the timing plate on the back. You'd have to draw out the holes and, and figure out what top dead center is. And then I'm looking at them. I took a, a close look at the two flywheels and I said, geez, that's really not good because of the weight, the balance, the balance is going to be off. So, and you're spinning this, you're going to lose, you're going to lose horsepower. And if that's the case, just stay with points. Until you can find the proper parts. They're out there guys. They're out there. So remember 1996 to 2001. That is the flywheel from a Kawasaki KE100. And the parts you're going to need for the CDI belt. Now that's what I use. That's where I get them. And I just explained to you guys how to get them. Buy junk bikes. Switch out, switch out the uh, parts. You can even if you had a bike that was running. You want to put points into the newer bike. You can do that. Put your stuff, your parts, onto that bike. Put that part onto your bike. And then you still have a bike that is running on both ways. Okay? So, um, as far as switching out flywheels, I find it very dangerous. And I highly not recommend it. Okay? So, and I gave you my reasons why. I'm just going to say them one more time. I know I'm repeating myself. But, one... Weight, you're going to rob horsepower. Two, it's not balanced. Okay? So that can cause catastrophic failure. And three, the magnets are going to be in the wrong place anyway, so your timing is going to be way off. So those are my major complaints with the whole thing. And, um, yeah. So, anyway. Excuse me. I'm tired. But I'm off. You guys have a great day. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.